pulled up here. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this morning? Oh, we got all of them. Okay. sitting on the, the tithing box table. Um, you can fill those out. You can just leave it with me. Uh, and I'll get these into Connie. Thank you. One other quick announcement. Um, for those of you who parked on this side of the building, I don't know if you noticed the bus is parked there. Where the bus is parked, that is now reserved parking for the bus because we do haul, we do pick up people with um, wheelchairs and everything so that we can drop, drop them off right there on the concrete. It is now going to be reserved bus parking, so we will have little cones or so, something like that out there, right, Wayne? Something like that? <laughs> whatever you want to put there. Oh, whatever I want to put there. So, 
just, 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 to, just to let you all know, if there's no other announcements today, oh yes, some of you know during this worship we're looking around, I'm absent-minded today. Yes. We, we, we notice the uh, projectors are blank. Very Yes. <laughs> Took him a while. <laughs> well, just because I, I, I know the words to the songs. <laughs> um, but back in the sound booth, we need people to help. help. Sign, sign up to help. One, even if it's one Sunday a month, just run the projectors. It's not that hard. We can train you. Um, we can create a calendar where it's just... You don't have to serve every week. It's not an every week commitment. You, one Sunday a month, if you can come in, run the projectors, it'll all be set up, ready to roll for you, okay? Just, so just see um, Wayne or myself, and we can get you on the schedule and train you. Okay, guys? All right. And I assume we have a children's sermon today? Oh, there she is. <laughs> all right. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for today. And these children are going to come forward. Allow the lessons can be taught to them. Speak to their hearts and their minds. Pray for Casey's sermon as he, as he delivers it to us. Thank you, Father, for this church and everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. Children, you're welcome to come forward. Wow. 
wonderful names of Jesus. He is our, can you read? He is our advocate. He's our advocate. He's the Alpha and the Omega. That says that in Revelation 1.8. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Good for you. Beloved Son, the branch, Isaiah 4, 2. He's the bread of life, it says in John 8. Oh, we just go on and on. Look down here. Cornerstone in Psalm 118. Day spring. I love that one. That one is beautiful, isn't it? Day spring. Door. First and last. Oh my. We can just go on and on and on and on. He's the head of the church. He's the great I am. The Emmanuel. Let's go on down here. King of the Jews. The life. Lord of Lords. Our Messiah. Morning Star, which is another beautiful thing. Prince, yes, Prince of, Prince of Peace, Rose of Sharon. Oh, it just goes on and on, doesn't it, boys yes. and girl? On and on.
team was talking about having Bibles available, I got to share some good news with you all. All the Bibles that Connie had ordered that we would have surplus extra for this new year were all taken. They were all taken. She's got to place another order. I think she explained that in the, in the bulletin. So if you, you're looking for one of those chronological Bibles, uh, give us another week and we'll have Bibles for you. Uh, but man, that's, that's some good news. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's a great thing. But I was also talking last week about reading Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 chapters. We got 31 days in January. So I'm really committed to reading that chronological plan, but I really also am committed to reading through Proverbs every day this, this whole month. And I've been sending out emails about those, those uh, daily readings. If you are interested in, in reading with me, you want to read, like I said, being accountable with someone, being, having a partner to do something like that is always a good thing. Let me know and send me an email and, and we'll get you uh, on an email list. I, would, I like when people share what, they, what they've read, what, what's important to them. We do that on, on Wednesday nights here with the Bible study and that's kind of my favorite thing is, is hearing how God's word is used in other people's lives. That, that, to me, that's an encouraging thing. So, so I'm asking you to, to, to read through Proverbs with me, but, but let's do that and, and encourage each other. You, use the email as a tool to help just share how God's working with us. So my plan is for all this month to talk about Proverbs. I want to talk about those, those readings that we do each week, if you're doing that proverb plan with me. And I want to talk today about how valuable... <coughs> Is wisdom. I got a question. How valuable is wisdom? And the verses that I want to start with are Proverbs 3, 13, and 15. So you're gonna you're gonna get your Bibles out and, and you're gonna read with that. And like Gene was saying, we also have extra Bibles that we put on the shelf here. Um, thank you, Janice, for, for doing that. If you need a Bible during the service, they're here. Take a Bible. But I put up on my, my title screen something I want to to talk about. I put up bars of gold. Does anybody know what one ounce, and, and those bars are not one ounce bars, but what one ounce of gold is currently going for this week? About $1,250. $1,250? A Troy ounce. That's true. Uh, I looked earlier this week, you know, the, the prices fluctuate a lot. Like, price of gold is kind of like price of gas. It goes up and down. And, <coughs> But when I looked earlier this week, Jim, it was $1,162 for one ounce. About that big, more or less. The second picture that I put up there is silver. Still not uh, an ounce of silver. Those are our silver bars. Anybody know about the, the price of silver this week? What that would be like? It's much less than gold. What did you say, Paul? No, 15. 15? You're, you're very, very close. <laughs> Uh, when I checked, uh, I think on Monday is the day I checked, it was about $16. Around $16. $16 for just a small one ounce uh, bar. The last one that I put on of the three pictures is a ruby. Anybody know any value to rubies? How valuable rubies are? Any price? You got, you got a ruby on your ring or some kind of jewelry? I learned a whole lot this week when I, when I, was, when I was reading about this. I know nothing about, about ruby jewelry prices, about gemstones. Of course, it, it depends on the quality of the stone. It depends on the color of the stone and, and how the stone is cut. But a ruby, um, one carat, just one carat ruby, can be worth up to $15,000. $15,000 for one carat ruby. All three of those, pretty valuable items. I, I, I bet we would, we would all agree that each of those three things are, are pretty valuable. Pretty, pretty useful with their value for, for buying, spending, investing, saving. But it makes me think, how valuable is wisdom? I was talking last week about reading Proverbs, and, and Proverbs, of course, is one of those wisdom books. Um, many, many places throughout the book of, of Proverbs, it, it talks about wisdom itself. Um, 
And it made me learn some things about wisdom this last week that I did not know about. Uh, I talked about that last week on, at the Bible study, something that I've learned about wisdom. But I wanted to share these verses with you because it kind of sets the stage for this whole idea of reading Proverbs and wisdom. Uh, if you got your Bible, it's Proverbs 3.13. Proverbs 3.13 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. I was telling you about that gold. Let's round off and, and say about $1,200 for, for one ounce. I was telling you about silver, about $16 for, for one ounce. I was telling you about rubies, up to $15,000 for one carat. Yet here, Proverbs is telling us that wisdom is more valuable than all three of those. In, in, our, in our life, we, we probably have some things that we value, that, that we hold dear to us, that, that we think are important. But when Proverbs was written, these three things were chosen. They, they're pretty valuable commodities at that time. They didn't have cash. They had some coins, but their coins were even made out of gold that, that the verse is talking about. So... Finding wisdom, the very first verse says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, who gain understanding. <sighs> Makes me ask some questions about that wisdom. I was thinking, if wisdom is so valuable that it's worth more than gold, if it's more than silver, if it's more than, than rubies, if it's more than all of these Expensive items, if it's more valuable, how do we get it? Where does it come from? If, if, it, if it's valuable, if it's something of value, sounds like something we should want, something that we should need. So how do we get it? That's what's nice about reading through Proverbs. Proverbs answers those kinds of questions. I want to show you something. Uh-oh, we're going to lose it now. Oops. Delaney, can you switch that for me? Where does wisdom come from? First question I had, what in the world is wisdom? Well, when I don't know something, I, I, I'm a guy that I want to know about things. I want to look things up. I'm very curious. If, if I'm, <laughs> I, I have my iPad. And, and, and I read Amazon Kindle books. That iPad for Amazon Kindle, that app, has a dictionary that all I have to do, if I'm reading through a chapter and I don't understand a word, all i got to do is tap that word that I don't understand, and boop, up appears a little window, tells me what the dictionary says that word means. And then I can close it out and I can go on reading, and now I've added that word to the words that I know. I'm a very curious guy. I, I want to know more. I always want to know more. And so when I was talking about wisdom and, and reading it this week and knowing that I was going to speak about it this morning, first place I went, dictionary. The new Oxford American Dictionary says that wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So wisdom must have something to do with experience. About about being able to say that, that you've done something before, about not being a novice at it, about, about being familiar. But it also has something to do with knowledge, about knowing something, about, about the facts of that thing. But it also has something to do with good judgment. Experience comes with time, Knowledge can, can come with learning. But what do you do about that good judgment? How, do you, how does that come about? This is what the dictionary says. These three factors, these three characteristics, apply to what wisdom is. But when you're reading in Proverbs, and it, and it talks about wisdom, 
there's something that I think our dictionary definition is lacking. There's something not included in the dictionary that, that the Bible does include. Does that surprise any of you? That, that there's something in the Bible that, that maybe some other book in the world doesn't really see as valuable? There's something else that the Bible talks about that this definition skips over. It's not experience, it's not knowledge, and, and it's not really good judgment, but it, but it ties in with that. How about knowledge of God? Knowledge of God's nature, of God's characteristics. I think that you can have knowledge, you can have experience, you can have judgment, you can be factually correct in what you're doing, but still be wrong at the same time. Um, Delaney, it's not working again, and I'm not sure why. Can you switch that? In Proverbs chapter 1, there's a verse that kind of goes with this and explains that. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You can experience things in this world. You can learn all the facts in every library, university, Wikipedia, Google, whatever you, whatever you got. You can have judgment. But if it's not based on the fear of the Lord, then you're missing something. There's a fourth factor of wisdom that sometimes doesn't come into play when it should. We have to base wisdom on God. <clears throat> Who better to know the experience of being a human in this world? Jesus came, lived an entire lifetime, as a physical human in this world. God himself came to this earth. He knows what it's like to be a person in this world. God created the world. Who else is there that has knowledge about this world more than God? God has that knowledge. And good judgment? Oh my gosh. God's got judgment more than any person I can think of. God knows what's right and wrong. He, he determined what was right and wrong. So this fear of the Lord that is the beginning of knowledge, it's got to be based on that relationship with God. Delaney, can you switch it for me? Proverbs 9.10 actually goes with this idea. It says, fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Again, talking about fear of the Lord... But it's tying back into that idea of good knowledge. How, how do you have knowledge of, of what's good or, or, or judgment about what's good? Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. It is extremely difficult to be truly and completely wise person without God. Um, have you seen um, like New York Times bestseller list? They have, they have non-fiction lists that they get published every week of, of the number one you know, selling books in, in different categories and non-fiction. Self-help books, diet books, are always on that list. Self-help books of, you can improve your life in 30 days. Or, you know, just you know, do this such and such program and, and you can become a better person. Well, that might work. Might, and, and look at me, I'm kind of skeptical when I say might. Because I'm, I'm sure that, that those books that are on that New York Times bestseller list are lacking that fourth area of wisdom. They're probably lacking God. The creator of this world that came to this earth and experienced life, they, they determine and define what is good and bad, what is right and wrong should be the wisest thing, more so than, than any writer, any author, any publisher that, that puts a, a book out. That's the place to go to. And this, this month, I would like you 
to experience that. I want you to, to read Proverbs. I want you to, to see the wisdom of God. And, and, and Proverbs is a nice place to, to see that um, in a concise 31 chapter book. You, you, can, you can see the, the wisdom of God in, in, an, in one book. Uh, I'm not disparaging in any way reading the entire Bible. Man, like I said, I, I'm, I'm reading that chronological plan every day. But I'm also reading Proverbs and, and seeing the wisdom of God. You cannot base judgment, your knowledge, even the experiences you've had in this world, without taking into account God. It can't be done. There's something missing. Got any good carpenters in here? Any carpenters that, that build things? My mom, she, she's kind of a woodworking carpenter person. If you build a table, you build it with three legs, is it a very sturdy table? It depends where you put the legs. Is it more stable if you put four legs? It is possible that it could stand up, but it is better structurally sound. It is sturdier with four. If we build our lives around what we think is right about our judgment, if we think it, if we build our lives about our experience, well, I grew up in, in such and such a situation, and, and my parents taught me blah blah blah, whatever it may be. That's true. If, if, if we went to school and, and learned about facts and figures and, and what 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 history may say or what math may be, those are all true. But if we leave off that fourth characteristic of God being the foundation of wisdom, the fear of the Lord, our table that we're building as a carpenter is not so stable anymore. Yes, it may stand up to certain things. Yes, it may be useful at times. But really, when it comes to heavy lifting, when it comes to something that you want to place a good foundation and, and put something of, of some weight and some value, you don't want to put it on a three-leg table. You want to put it on a four-leg table. And that's the way wisdom is. You've got to put God in it. And I'm, and I'm imploring you that my advice is to find that wisdom of God. Finding God in His own Word is the place to, to start. God's got that Bible there for a reason. You've, you've got it open. I'm asking you to open it every day. Open it every day. See what God's got there for you. 31 days from now, or 31 days after the beginning of the, the month, uh, you come to the 31st, you're going to see what I'm saying. Uh, it, it's a challenge, I guess. If you want to look at it that way, it's, it's a challenge. Um, oh, I, I remember those. <laughs> Anybody remember the Pepsi challenge? <laughs> you, you take a, a can of Pepsi, you put it into a cup, you take a can of Coke, the other product, you put that into a cup, and you secretly have someone, you know, taste test. Do you remember those commercials, the Pepsi challenge? Well, I'm challenging you. Read God's Word every day. And tell me at the end of the month, say, this is what God did for me. I'm pretty confident that you're going to have an amazing story to tell me. And I, like, like I said when, when I was talking about it at the beginning of the introduction, I love hearing how God is working with us. I love hearing what God's doing with us. Um, last week I talked about putting in your email, uh, sending me an email, letting me know if you're, you're reading. Uh, I'm sending out a, a little, just a little blurb about daily readings. But I love receiving email back. It's not the sending out that... That, that, that's great, but it's the receiving about telling me what God's Word is doing with you that encourages me. Delaney, can you switch again, please? The last thing that I want to show you in, in Proverbs from this last week's reading is in Proverbs, and we're going to read uh, chapter 2, and we're going to read from 2 to 6. So Delaney, I'm going to need you to switch it when I get ready. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2 says, Tune your ears to wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasure. Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord 
and you will gain knowledge of God. How are you to know this knowledge of God? How are you to, to, to have wisdom? Do you sit around and, and does it just come to you? Look what it says. Seek out wisdom. Seek it out. You actually have to be an active participant. It's not just like God suddenly knocking you on the head and saying, Hello, you're the guy I'm deciding to give wisdom to. Congratulations. Have fun with that. You have to actually seek it out. And once you do that seeking, look what it says in 5. It says, Then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord. Well, fearing the Lord was the foundation of wisdom that we had talked about before in those earlier verses. It says, Then you will understand. And it finishes, you will gain knowledge of God. And if you go on to 6, this is the closer of the whole deal. 6 says, for the Lord grants wisdom. This wisdom comes from God. You don't create it in yourself. You don't, you don't become wise in your own ways, in your own abilities. You are wise because God grants this wisdom. But it's an active thing that you have to do to seek, to, to look toward Him, to read in that Bible to build that relationship up. And it finishes, For the Lord grants wisdom from His mouth come knowledge and understanding. This is where it comes from, from God. But it takes a little bit of our, of our work. You know, and this isn't really a, 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 a Paul kind of works way, works in faith. If you're familiar with that idea, I'm, I'm not saying that, that, that you're not working towards your salvation. I am saying that we have to put some investment in to finding wisdom. It said seek it. Look for it. Be active to, to have wisdom. And in the end, God grants this wisdom. But yet, we've got to kind of do our part. Wisdom isn't the, the Powerball lottery of, of spiritualness. It's not like, well, I, I put my dollar in and, and I, I hope I win. I hope I get something from God. God only grants, you know, one time around on, on that random drawing of, of the lottery. No, that's not the way God works. We have to do a little bit of investment here. So I'm asking you, look at God's Word. You've got Proverbs open right now? Have Proverbs open every day. Start your morning with Proverbs. End your day with Proverbs. However you do your quiet time, however you organize your, your, your time with God, Include Proverbs. And I'm guaranteeing that after you read through Proverbs that you'll see God working in a different way in your life. Can't help it. Can't help it. It's going to happen. Ted, I'm going to pray and, and I'll ask the, the worship team to, to come and sing for our invitation. But while your group is coming up, I'm going to finish and I'll pray. I'm just thinking that, that if we commit individually as a church to making God's Word our foundation, that we will be blessed by it. There's no other way that it can happen. So I'm, I'm giving you that challenge, and, and for the rest of this month, for all of, of January, I'm going to be talking about Proverbs each week. Uh, if you're reading with me, let me know. Send me an email and tell me something. And, and I'd like to, to hear from you to, to see what, what, what Proverbs means to you, what, what God's Word is doing for you. And, and that helps me to, to kind of you know, kind of molds my sermon, I think. It, it molds this message to see how God's working with us. Let's pray and then we'll see. Father, we just